glad that so many people could make it out uh, here. I'm, I'm Alex from Mapbox and uh, um, OpenStreetMap US. And I've been personally involved like on the OpenStreetMap US chapter to organize this conference. And I'm absolutely stoked that so many people could come out for it. I was not expecting this. I just looked at the sign-in numbers. We're, uh, well, we're very close to 500 people who actually came out. We sold out this conference with over 500 people, as you know. So this is really like the biggest OSM conference to date, and I'm super stoked about that. So thank you. Thank you all for coming. And I hope that you get something out of this conference and have a lot of fun here. So um, I'm going to talk about um, more open. Today's license in OpenStreetMap is an, is an open license, but it has this little feature that you may have heard about uh, that's called share alike. What share alike does is it effectively makes OpenStreetMap's data incompatible with any other license, proprietary licenses or other open licenses. And that fact is what is hurting OpenStreetMap today. This is what's between us and making the best map in the world. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. This is OpenStreetMap.org. We all know it, right? It's the Washington uh, Convention Center on there. We did good work on this map. The OpenStreetMap community in DC did a really awesome job here. Also some government data in there. Um, there's a search on this map. It's a sleepy map. Looking at OpenStreetMap.org, it's easy to think of it as somehow like you know, an open source um, alternative to a, uh, some of like the proprietary map, the mapping portals out there that we use every day. But really, where the meat is on OpenStreetMap is this, right? Planet.osm.org. Who has been to Planet.osm.org? Who has downloaded data from there? Yeah, so this is the really awesome thing about OpenStreetMap. You can download all of OpenStreetMap's data as raw data. It looks a little bit like this. And you can do any, well, it's come, it doesn't come out that well, right? It's XML, right? Awesome format. <laughs> um, you can download this data, and you can do with this data whatever you want, right? This is really what's so huge about this project. And this is, and this is exactly what allows so many uh, organizations or individuals, businesses, nonprofits to use OpenStreetMap every day and build with OpenStreetMap whatever they want to build with it. The way how a lot of people use OpenStreetMap out there is not as always them that work, but in some other incarnation that has been brought to them by somebody else, by an organization, individual, business. That's how a lot of people use OpenStreetMap, and it's really what makes OpenStreetMap like this is what would really like what's really fa there's really like this huge potential in OpenStreetMap. This is like these what I'd like to call like force multipliers where. But OpenStreetMap is not just the OSM.org map that you get to embed. No, it's the raw data again, right? And this is really what, what, what is helping and driving, gro driving growth in this, uh, in this community. So for instance, this is a mapping party here in Washington, D.C. Um, at the Peace Corps, right? And the people that you see on there are Peace Corps volunteers mapping the areas where they worked in the field, right? So they sat down there on a day and like they went back to the areas where they worked from and put like an incredibly uh, accurate map uh, on OpenStreetMap with satellite tracing tools and added like the local knowledge to that. Now the way they use these maps in the field is not from OSM.org. They put this on a GPS device or they print it out to show it to other people out there offline without internet. That's huge. This is only possible with OpenStreetMap. This is our competitive advantage, right? We are open data. You couldn't do this with any other proprietary map, right? So really what OpenStreetMap is, is much less like this open source data portal. It's about like OpenStreetMap as that geo data hub of the future where everybody can get a lot out of, not just in terms of the data that is in there, but also in terms of the entire tool chain that you have around OpenStreetMap for doing things fast. I'm going to talk to people all the time who are using proprietary data tools uh, every day. They look at OpenStreetMap and they think of it as an editor. They think of it as like, this is cool because it has a great editor. So we have great, we've had like great successes in OpenStreetMap now. The project's been around for 10 years. We've seen a lot of adoption. This project has grown big. And you know, not least this conference here, 
with you know over 500 people turning out is is a good sign for that, right? Uh, at the same time, you know, we've not only seen like you know at the same time we've like seen imen uh, uh, immense growth in the community. That's you know our graph, like our uh, registered user graph that we all love to brag with it. At least I love to brag with it. We're over 1.5 1.5 million people registered on OpenStreetMap.org now. That's really cool. Obviously, not all of them are mapping, right? We know that there's like like 300,000. I think Matt said earlier it's 400,000 people who have been actively involved in OpenStreetMap in terms of putting something on the map. It's 20,000 people every month that log into OpenStreetMap and edit that map, right? If I'm, if I'm going to adopt social media speak right now, this is pretty ingre incredible engagement, right? Nobody else does that out there. When we see like a map maker number, we shouldn't feel like somehow impressed by that because they have a lot more users in Google, map, right? Google Maps, but nobody actually edits that map. Now, the reality though is that that's about how big we are, right? There's like millions and millions and millions of users out there, millions and millions of people out there who use a map every day on a device and who don't use OpenStreetMap. Like, what is actually the impact that we're making, right? And this is a question that should bother us. That should bother everybody in this room. This should bother the businesses who are trying to build a great product on top of OpenStreetMap. This is a question that should bother the NGOs who are using OpenStreetMap for urban planning, for disaster response. And this is a question that should bother us as citizens interested in like, the growth and the success of the open internet. So how do we get from like, this little small ball to like, actually you know, that open geodata hub of the future? How do we grow OpenStreetMap from what we are today, which is really successful and awesome, to something that actually has huge impact on everybody's, people's li on everybody's lives? So, in a, in a world where we increasingly work with raw data and build our maps and geo tools with raw data, it really comes down to this. It comes down to interoperability. We want to make sure that the data that we put out there can be used by anybody for anything. And that must include mixing and matching it with other data. It really should be like as simple as possible to use OpenStreetMap as raw data with any other data set out there. And it's becoming more and more important as you know, we have a lot more open data out there that we can play with. Uh, it's becoming more and more important as like, businesses having like, a lot more data internally that they actually can like, use for, for something. Same thing is true for NGOs, like the adoption of, of, of actual data tools and the adoption of using data internally for driving, uh, for, for, for driving their work has exploded recently, right? So we should be like using this lever that we have in OpenStreetMap and apply those force multiplier to the full force multipliers to the full effect to just create like a lot more impact than what we have right now, which in turn will come back to us by creating a lot more incentives to contribute to the map that we have and make it better not only in terms of data, but also in terms of the tools that we have available for doing great stuff on OpenStreetMap. Now, OpenStreetMap has this license. Uh, it's called uh, the Open Database License. And as I said in the beginning, uh, it has this, this feature uh, I want to put under uh, under quotes. It has this feature called Share Like. This is what Share Like looks at, like in the license. This is like the excerpt of like the, the actual ODBL. Uh, and the part that describes the, the, the share like it says, share like 4.4 a any derivative database that you publicly use must be only under the terms of this license, a later version of the license, a compatible license. There's some stuff around it um, that actually makes sense of what what's, what, 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 what what this says, or like a little bit more sense of what, it, what, what this excerpt says. But really what it does come down to is that if you use OpenStreetMap as raw data and if you improve it, you could share it under the same terms that you consume the data under. So take OpenStreetMap data, you improve it, you have to release it on the same, same ODBL terms. Now that sounds really great at first, because it's like this guarantee, it, it sounds like this guarantee uh, that you know everybody gets the benefit from everybody else's improvements in, in OpenStreetMap. But really what it comes down to is introduces a lot of incompatibilities. 
it really means that de facto you can't mix OpenStreetMap with other data sets. There's some ways of doing that, but it's always complicated. And you will, and, and if you involve your lawyers with that, they will have not a clear answer for you. And that is the problem. And really what we are navigating towards with this type of incompatibility and this kind of friction on board is much less like a future of, you know, OpenStreetMap, the data hub, the open data hub of the future, but more like, you know, OpenStreetMap, this one other silo in the world of data silos. And that's not the future that I would like to work towards. The real joke is that Even if we got other organizations and institutions to open their data under the ODBL, we couldn't even benefit from it as OpenStreetMap because you can't import ODBL data into OpenStreetMap. So we have a, we have a circular independency going on here in OpenStreetMap. And I don't know how to make sense of this. So I want to give you a couple of examples of what I think should be possible under OpenStreetMap today which is not possible. And those are examples. But I think those examples matter because they point towards possible potential, like real use cases that could happen with OpenStreetMap if the license was not share-like. The first example here is New York City. This is uh, New York City buildings, uh, over one million buildings in the five boroughs of New York City. We're not seeing on there, there's also awesome address data. We're using this data in OpenStreetMap. We've imported that data. We're, we're actually actively importing that data. I'm personally involved in this project. Working with the, with the New York City government, we are uh, taking the data, converting it to OpenStreetMap, and uploading it batch-wise. It's creating a very beautiful map now in, open, in, 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 in New York City. We're adding great building footprint data and addresses, which is going to be great for geocoding. But what I'm really excited about is not like just improving the open street map. What I'm really excited about is also thinking about like the other lane back to the government, right? How could government like use open street map directly to manage their data together with the citizens? So what we're doing here is a first step to circumvent the license is we sent them a daily email of changes that have happened in open street map. And this is going to help the idea is that this is going to help government to maintain their building footprint data, to maintain the address data better than they are today, more efficient than today. Because if they know that something changed, they can go out and check, double check and then put that, that change into, into, into their own databases. And we benefit mutually, right? Now what they can't do is they can't just go and see, that, oh, there was a change in OpenStreetMap. I'm going to take the building that changed. I'm going to copy it into my database. So what's possible is that OpenStreetMap takes the data off of New York City, but we can't give it back. And why? It's because our, our license is not compatible with the New York City license. New York City's laws are compatible with, with, with us, right? But we can't build the two-way street right now. And there's a huge loss for the project. Next, Wheelmap. Wheelmap.org, if you're not familiar with it, that's an app. Install it on your, on your cell phone. It's awesome. It's use, it uses OpenStreetMap. I'm very excited about this project. It uses OpenStreetMap in a very unique way, and I think this is something that should be possible, that should be like multiplied in our, in our community. This is a model that should be multipliable in our community. What Wheelmap does is uh, it, gives, it gives you a very simple app that tells you about the accessibility of venues around you. So if you are in a wheelchair, if you're a wheelchair user, or if you're like meeting up with somebody who is in a wheelchair, you can look in, uh, into the app and, and find out, you know, where are the places, the cafes around here where we should meet up, right? If you find a place that doesn't have appropriate information but you know about it, you can enter it. It's very simple. It's just a couple of you know, thumb, thumb taps. What's really cool and what's really awesome of this, about, about this project is that all the data that you find in there is all from OpenStreetMap, right? So the, the, the POI data that you find in there is OpenStreetMap data. The, the data that you add there, whether a place is wheelchair accessible or not, go straight back into OpenStreetMap. So you connect to your community who cares about wheelchair accessibility to OpenStreetMap without them actually needing to, to, to worry or to, to care about OpenStreetMap directly. This goes back to my point of the force multipliers, right? Now, wouldn't it be really great if the wheelchair organization, a small NGO in Berlin, could just go and take the data that they have helped create in OpenStreetMap and do what they call mainstreaming and go like, look Foursquare, look factual, 
look Google, look Nokia, look Yelp, we have great wheelchair accessibility data. You can put this into your application. And then when I look for a restaurant on Foursquare, I also know then whether it's wheelchair accessible or not. And really where that vision that you would talk about here is that OpenStreetMap actually gets to power some of these data sets out there. And that's huge. And that is only possible because of, uh, because of the fact that OpenStreetMap is open data. And that is not possible currently because our license builds a wall around our data set. So last example I want to share here, and it's come up in the talk before, uh, is Wikipedia. Wikipedia contains a lot of lo uh, location information. Wouldn't it be great if all of Wikipedia's location information would be powered by OpenStreetMap directly? There's actually big legal questions whether this is possible. Because if you put that type of data onto your onto like the onto like the Wikipedia uh, uh, licensed uh, uh, website, you will see that the license of Wikipedia and the license of Op OpenStreetMap is not compatible. The two biggest or the one one of the two two of the most important projects of the of the open internet out there are not compatible with each other. There's at least huge confusion in the community about this. This is a, a note to the mailing list of Wikiloves Monuments of a discussion of whether or not OpenStreetMap coordinates can be used in Wikipedia. This person says, like, I think it's not OK to get the coordinates from OpenStreetMap. Now, there may be an argument later, and Matt already shook his head, that you know, somehow it's possible maybe it is possible to use, to use, to use uh, uh, OpenStreetMap data in Wikipedia, and I think it would be awesome. But this example here, this note here, shows the confusion that we create with the license. And this is oftentimes as bad. People go there, don't understand it, and walk away. And we don't even have the capacity to explain it all. The Open Database License itself has 4,000 words. We've created 4,500 words of community guidelines so far, which is still insufficient. It's manned by like a licensing working group that is doing great, that is doing great work. But this is a volunteer-based organization, and we have a license that we can't even maintain. So hence my call, more open. If we want to really tap into this vision of OpenStreetMap as the open data hub of the future, if we want to get to be this organization, if we want to get to be this database that powers almost any map application out there, we need to make it as easy as possible for people to use OpenStreetMap as raw data. This is our advantage that we need to tap into. And that will not work without dropping ShareLike. We will have to drop ShareLike to make this vision a reality. ShareLike can't be fixed. The OpenStreetMap database license, the ODBL, the, the Open Database license, is so complex because it has this massive feature that is not a feature that is ShareLike. So the good news is that since the last licensing change that was uh, admittedly painful, um, we have a process in place now to change that license with a decision by the majority of uh, OpenStreetMap Foundation members and an approval of two-thirds of active contributors, this license can be changed. We can change this problem, and I think we need to change this problem. We should tackle this now, because this is really about the future of OpenStreetMap. This is obviously a conversation, um, and I invite you to engage in that. I invite you to be like going through this conference with an open mind and open ears, see the talks here, some about, some. Some will be touching on these problems. You may have just seen like the talk by Dave, uh, Dave uh, Blackman from Foursquare, who talked about this. There will be a talk by um, a lady from, from Elizabeth from USGS. There will be um, a talk by the National Park Service. These are all institutions that are, that are dealing with these questions, and they will, have, uh, they will have some opinions on that. There will also be a talk about the New York City government uh, example that I gave you. Uh, we will also have a Birds of a Feather station later at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, in, uh, and you can see in which room on the, on the board out there. With that, I want to thank you um, and uh, open this for questions.